ఫార్టీ ఫైవ్ ఇయర్ ఓల్డ్ దర్శన్ పుట్టన్నయ్య ఈస్ ఎ టెక్ కే టర్న్ ఎంటర్ప్రీనర్ బేస్డ్ ఇన్ యూఎస్ ఈజ్ రిటర్నింగ్ ఫ్రమ్ ద యూఎస్ ఫర్ ద సెకండ్ టైమ్ టు కంటెస్ట్ ఇన్ ద మేల్కోటే అసెంబ్లీ కాన్స్టిట్యుయెన్సీ ఫర్ ద ఫోర్త్ కమింగ్ కర్ణాటక అసెంబ్లీ ఎలక్షన్స్ లాస్ట్ టైమ్ ఈ కంటెస్టెడ్ దిస్ సీట్ అన్సక్సెస్ఫుల్ దిస్ సీట్ వాజ్ రిప్రజెంటెడ్ బై ఈస్ ఫాదర్ అండ్ కర్ణాటక రాజ్య రైతు సంఘ ప్రెసిడెంట్ పుట్టన్నయ్య who i mean who was very dear to farmers mr darshan you are the only candidate from uh, sarvodaya karnataka sarvodaya party to contest the assembly elections uh, what's your main objective behind taking to uh, assembly elections uh, you know with respect to the uh, campaign for protecting the rights and uh, uh, ensuring the welfare of farmers uh, so, so first and foremost uh, thank you for interviewing me second uh, from our party sarvodaya karnataka we have about nine people contesting this time around uh we so some of the major issues that we are trying to focus on are are solely based on uh, farmer issues is you know msp is a big issue for us uh obviously if you dive a little deeper uh, schools are a big big problem in the villages basic uh, needs right uh, that is those are all issues that we all know that exist in the villages but i think we are also trying to figure out like how can we give financial literacy uh, to the farmers because that is a basic thing even though if they make some money they don't know how to save money they would have already spent more than the money they would have made so how do you help them try to manage their finances plus also look at holistic development of a farmer in in a village our goal is to really start the transformation uh, whether it is modernizing the villages the infrastructure modernizing the lives of the people in the villages or giving them basic facilities and helping them you know live a better life give, uh, by, through financial literacy so that's the goal for us how do you think you can make a difference by using this legislature power if you win i think making uh, strong policies around these things right like you know i feel like a lot of the policies that that are being made are not really the most of the revenue from the state comes from farming but if you look at the budget it's upside down so we got to fix that once you fix that once you have enough re- investment being done at the villages the farmers lives can be our focus is how can we modernize not only just the infrastructure modernize the lives of the people in the villages and then modernizing the country right through development and modernization of villages we can actually move the country forward is our focus and i think to an- to answer your question now, how can you know in the legislature if we are able to come up with policies that can affect not only just one part of the farmers but i think the broader farmer community giving them msp giving them you know yes loan waivers is a big big thing right so if they lo- waive the loan waive off the loans the next thing that's happening is they are again taking the loans so how do you waive off the loan and then create a pattern where they can actually self sustain those are the policies that we have to think it's just not a one time solution but a, a longer term solution how can we come up with those kind of policies is what i would like to focus on can we work and continue the winter sure. so you are confident about your victory uh, yes uh-huh. this time i think the uh-huh. the one of people who are actually coming from the other parties <laughs> i think that that says a lot and a lot of people are saying hey, i'm going to stay here but i'm going to still support you uh-huh. which didn't happen as much last time uh-huh. and uh, i don't know how to say it, take it but i think that gives me a lot of confidence there is a feeling that the political system has failed to understand and also respond to aspirations of farm youth in tune with their problems or changing time you know like what do you think about this absolutely absolutely i think the one thing that we are not doing and we have to do more of it is continually educate farmers the youth are actually farming the same way our grand great grandfathers were farming yes, yes. there are some i mean the crop crops we are farming is the same crop our forefathers were were doing that right i think how can we help them upskill mm-hmm. and say there are multi crop 
farming methods there's new crops that can be grown mm. there's new demand in the market mm. so how can we help them through training and exposure that they can they can grow certain crops but and then also create a uh, job jobs by creating these small scale industries locally mm. right you know, that those are some some things that the government can start doing uh deliberately you know we cannot just come up with a program and say hey if we have this program and here's a checklist that we have done but what is the impact we have to start i think every government should have a kpi dashboard key performance indicator right okay here is what we did on a weekly basis they have to really show that these are the number of lives they changed these are the number of policies that were implemented through those policies these these number of these many number of lives were changed so do, like we have to get to get a little deeper and not just make policy and figure out who impl- I mean, forget about who implements it so we just have to get get to the ground level see sometimes if you think of it it beats the logic farmers are a very you know uh, dominant community in terms of population when you take it as a community but when they express their anguish it's not seen it's not indicated in the political results electoral results is it due to the fact that the political system subverts their dominance through uh, affiliations to caste and uh, political parties and uh, i mean what are your feelings in this regard see there there's many ways that you can actually look at this right like caste is one thing but you know what happens during elections it is a momentary thing everybody is in this rush of elections and they are not thinking about the longer term they're like okay what can can i stay home for the next two days if i take some money right that's the honest truth that everybody knows and nobody wants to talk about it and and they don't care who comes and who wins because they in their heads like you know we go campaigning and a lot of people say you know if you come you do the same another person comes that person does the same why like why do I mean why do you matter or another person matter i will vote for the person who gives me the most money like that is the system that we have created and it is pathetic and I, like i'm i'm honestly baffled that we are still in this day and age we are still running our election systems based on these you know caste is a big thing right so they are pumping that like we are dividing villages we are dividing the country based on a lot of lot of these systems we as a politician we are politicians we are benefiting from their divide and their villages are suffering because of their divide if they come together we are we are at a loss right so like how do you bring them together so they can actually grow their villages so those are things that i feel like why our villages and the farmer community as a whole is is uh is not you know able to voice their opinions effectively there is a very small percentage who's actually voicing their opinions so if the farmer farming community comes together collectively i think we can bring change like nobody has ever seen so that is the the divide is what is actually causing whether it is caste whether it is uh class whether it is money power that is what is actually creating uh the divide see marketing has been the major bane of farmers for a long time and we take pride in saying that uh, bangalore is the it hub mm-hmm. why don't we ensure convergence of it with agriculture as a techie can you think of something which can help farmers find a better market in their local areas itself through application of it you see it is is a vehicle for us to do this like i do feel that i mean as everybody knows indus valley civilization for about a thousand years we were we uh, were we were the top we had the top gdp in the world the only reason was i mean there were many reasons the main reason i should say is because of the industrialized uh, uh, small scale industries were the heart of our nation and then britishers came and then we moved to agriculture based uh, country the dependency was created there all we have to create these small scale industries create jobs create use technology to create markets 
use technology to create transparency mm -hmm. finances mm -hmm. is a big piece like you know and then create slas so any work that gets done in the in the taluk office or wherever they have to get those things done once the transparency is created the leakage of money is going to stop once that stops our farmers will have more money when then that is i think that is where we can actually give them some relief and then use technology with for creating new markets new uh, you know help them create these small scale industries help them market those products through technology uh, darshan what are the main issues for you in these polls i think the main issues uh, that i'm trying to focus on are uh, first one is uh, msp uh, try to figure out ways to uh, create policies hopefully um, if i win uh, then the second one is uh, schools mm -hmm. education is a big piece i think two reasons why people uh, are uh, farmers uh, may you know are in debt mm -hmm. is because they're paying exorbitant fees for private institutions and second is the healthcare mm -hmm. um, the amount of money they have to shell mm -hmm. to keep up their you know loved ones right from a healthcare perspective if we can focus on those two things where mm -hmm. their money leakage is stopped i think those are i think there is a lot of other issues but i would like to start here mm -hmm. and the, the the first one is the msp second one is the uh, schools third one is the healthcare system the fourth one is um, is really create transparency for on a on a day to day basis by leveraging technology at taluk office or panchayat wherever to get their work done pretty you know quickly stop um you, you know bribes if you create transparency using technology we can actually figure out ways to stop this so that those are the main four issues that i want to immediately start working on Uh, some are longer term some are immediate see these polls have been fought very intensively okay but despite this fact several people you know like several progressive persons intellectuals and farmers leaders and also congress have stood behind you how do you feel about this i'm i'm very fortunate that a lot of people have stood behind me but that also means that i have a lot of responsibilities and i think uh, i am in the position and i with all the support that i've got gained i feel like we can actually execute uh, on some of these uh, main issues and create policies that can actually change many lives not just one or two lives i think that is uh, that should be our focus and and i think uh, we just have to understand uh, our farmers and, and and really get it at the ground level um so that though i think i'm i'm blessed to say that i've been able to get a lot of the support but at the same time like i said i have a lot of responsibilities are there any lessons that you learned from your previous elections in 2018 when you got defeated M many lessons i think the i had never fought an election ever in my life even a class election i never fought um this last time was my first election ever um I didn't know where to start. I had two months. Uh, there was a lot of lessons that I, I learned. We didn't really f plan at, at the booth level, like how do you garner votes. The all all we created was, you know, we created demand, but we really not able to con convert that. So I think that is where we are focused on uh, this time around. To a, I mean, there are people who are interested. They like what we are doing. They've liked what Karnataka Rajya Rai Sangh has done, and my father. um and his vision is what i am trying to carry forward and and i think uh, i didn't i didn't have the i didn't have my mind in the right place to understand everything that was going on so this time i'm, I'm i've been able to spend a lot of time and understand that and create a plan see are you planning to return to india and i mean i mean shift your base to india irrespective of the results of the polls this time yes that is uh, that is the intent and that is what i have done um like i've told this in other interviews i went back to the us last time i was only visiting here when my dad passed away mm -hmm. and i stayed and contested for the elections i had to wrap up my mm -hmm. business that i had started there once that is wrapped up mm -hmm. i came back and and I've, I've, i'm here so my base is is in india 
Well, that's Darshan Puttanaya who is banking on the support of farmers to win these elections for you. We'll be bringing in more such election related stories in the next 15 days. Stay tuned to The Hindu.